There's lots of customization tools within VS itself, but did you know you can also start customizing everything you want just at the VS install stage? Learn more on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I'm joined by Sujin Choi, who is a program manager on the Visual Studio Acquisitions team. Welcome, Sujin. Hi, great to be here. Great. So today we're talking about all the cool things that you can apparently do when you're just installing Visual Studio, right? Yep, exactly. Sweet. So yeah, I always thought you just hit install on Visual Studio on the pop up and then you let the magic happen and then you can just get started and that was it. But apparently there's more to it. There's a little bit more to it than that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some tips and tricks that I wanted to go over with you guys today. Um, there's also some advanced topics that I wanted to discuss with you guys, um, some of the tools that our enterprise users can utilize, um, and then some of the cloud development uh, tools that we're developing, um, and that's in beta. Awesome. Well, I'd love to see more. Yeah, so uh, let's actually get started. I have a deck prepared. Um, uh, all right, so we can start with the basics. Like what are workloads and which one or which ones do I install? Um, so to briefly define workloads, uh, it's a package of SDKs and tools needed for a specific development purpose. Um, so for example, if you want to develop a web application, for example, um, you can install the ASP.NET and web development workload, um, which includes tools like IS Express, SQL Server Database, um, as well as some of the commonly used project templates. Um, so basically, you want to help our users get started on a project quickly. This is what you talked about earlier. Um, just click install, and you'll be good to go. Um, now, a lot of the questions that we get uh, that we get is, do I have to install workloads? Um, no, you don't necessarily have to install them, but you really won't be able to run or build your applications locally without the necessary tools. Um, so you know, we've implemented this guardrail thing. Uh, let me show you here. So if you uh, uh, try to click on install, um, but you haven't selected any workloads, then uh, we show this uh, dialog to you reminding you to select a workload um, and to do so uh, so that you can actually develop within Visual Studio. That is pretty neat. Yeah, I always got kind of overwhelmed at first with all the different workloads. It's like, I'm just new. I don't really know where to start. So <laughs> yeah, any way to make that process easier is, is great. Exactly, yeah. This way you don't have to go through all the components and um, figure out which ones you need to select and all that kind of stuff. And you can actually learn a little bit more about each of these workloads in the link shown here, um, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash VS. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things that you can do in the Visual Studio installer. Um, so. There are folks who also ask us, what if I want to use preview features? Um, you can actually see in my screenshot here um, that I have multiple instances of Visual Studio installed. Um, this is actually not a special feature for internal folks. Um, and if you don't know already, you can actually install multiple instances of Visual Studio um, using, you know, to use Visual Studio preview version, for example, or just to try out different versions of Visual Studio using the Visual Studio installer as the management system. Um, yeah, did you have yeah. a question? Yeah, oh, no, I was just gonna say, I think it's safe to say that everybody who works on the Visual Studio team's installer looks like this. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I have and like six instances on mine. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and you know, like you can actually also do this too, even if you're not developing Visual Studio, right? Um, for using preview uh, channel, like I've described earlier. Um, or if you don't wanna have separate Visual Studios installed on your machine, you can actually click, um, you know, preview features on the IDE itself by going to tools options in the IDE um, to try out preview features. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then um, you can also install older versions of Visual Studio um, by going to the link shown here. Uh, we actually don't have the capability to allow us, our users to uh, say like roll back an update that you just took. 
Um, it is actually one of our top feedback items and we're definitely looking into how we can provide that, but it's just not available yet. Um, but as an enterprise and professional Visual Studio user, you can actually install older versions of Visual Studio um, by going to this link shown, um, or you can actually do this on myvs.com as well. Uh, this is actually pretty difficult to find by searching online, which is kind of by design, but it's, <laughs> it's not a secret. Um, you can go there to, to install older versions if you want to. Good to know. I've seen a couple suggestions come my way sometimes where it's like, can we just roll back to oh, yeah. another thing? And it's like, I don't know what to tell them because actually was unaware of this link. So that is good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and something exciting for the Visual Studio installer itself. Um, yes, we've heard your suggestions. Uh, the yes. Dart theme is finally coming to a Visual Studio installer near you. Um, so we're actually gradually rolling this out to um, our users. We've rebuilt um, essentially our uh, Visual Studio installer um, in WPF from the current one, which is built in Electron. Um, and you'll know that you have the new version uh, once you see 2.9 um, on the screen or higher. Um, and now with the WPF installer, users will actually notice better performance, minor reliability fixes, accessibility fixes, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and uh, speaking of accessibility, the installer will now support Windows Narrator, uh, which we're very happy about. It didn't um, before? No, unfortunately, wow. we, we couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, but now we can support it because it's written in, um, in the Windows Presentation Foundation. So That is exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one other behavior that you will notice is that you don't have to be an admin to launch the Visual Studio anymore. Um, just, just when you perform, you know, operations that require elevation, like uh, modifying or updating Visual Studio. Um, and so you can, you know, this way you can like view installation details and export configuration files without having to elevate or update the installer. Cool stuff. Yeah. Dark theme oh. is the best though. Dark theme is the best. It is. Uh, and one more thing, um, the installer actually will be one seventh of the size of what it is today. Um, so it'll leave a much smaller footprint on your machine. So that means I can't go for a coffee break while I'm waiting for VS to install now. Oh, dang it. Unfortunately not. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, so I can start rolling in a little bit more um, what I'm calling advanced topics for the day, um, but it really isn't. So um, first is .vs config. Um, this is something that we built because it was really highly suggested by our developer community, but it's really not used as much. And we found out that it's because many of our users actually don't know that this exists. Um, so I'm here to evangelize. Um, uh, we built this because we used to get, and we still do get a lot of questions around like, can I share what I installed on my machine to a new hire on my team um, without literally having to list out all the components that they have to install with Visual Studio. Um, so with VS Config, the answer is yes. You can actually import and export these configuration files across your teams and organizations, right? So. You can easily do this in the installer. Um, you can both import it and export it. And then also, if you actually uh, include your .vs config file in your repo um, in your solutions root directory, um, Visual Studio will actually detect which components are missing the next time a user opens that solution. And then it'll prompt them to install those uh, missing components. That is nice. I can confess, I kind of just learned about VS config like a week ago. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, it's yeah. not very well known, unfortunately, but I know it, it has a lot of use cases. And so we're here to, um, you know, tell you guys a little bit about it. Yeah, I like having the options. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and then the next one um, that we can offer is what we call an offline layout. Um, now, you can actually use the command line um, for more options of installing Visual Studio. You don't have to use the UI if you don't want to. Um, but in cases like a Visual Studio administrator, you might actually have to use the command line even if you don't want to. Um, so what they use is they would use something called a offline network layout to basically deploy and maintain these you know, Visual Studio installations on client machines. 
Um, so it's pretty easy. First, they would create this offline network layout using uh, this dash dash layout parameter, um, which you know they can use to specify a directory to create that offline install uh, cache. Um, and then if you actually omit everything starting from like dash dash add right there, it'll actually create a full Visual Studio offline layout, but you can create a partial offline layout to make it go faster. Or if you don't want people to use a certain workload, for example, for some reason, um, then you can actually uh, you know, use the dash dash add parameter to specify, specify exactly which workloads um, to install or to uh, specify which languages, language locales, for example, using the dash dash uh, lang. Um, but you can see all those command line parameters from our docs. I'm not here to get into any gritty stuff today. Um, and then once you created an offline layout, you just copy that to a network share. Um, here I have an example uh, using xcopy, but you can use robocopy if you want to. Um, and then at that point, um, the admin can actually deploy Visual Studio on client workstations, um, even if they're not connected to the internet. That is good to hear, especially nowadays when sometimes my Wi-Fi decides it's not having it. So, <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, that happens a lot. So, um, this is actually mostly for our enterprise customers, but um, you could use it personally as well. Um, sure, I think that works just like from a remote standpoint, right? Like since everybody and in enterprise, including, is elsewhere aside from the normal office space, I'm guessing. So, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, um, and uh, updating is just as easy as well. Uh, you can, there's two ways to do it. Um, one way is to pretty much repeat creating the layout, um, or there's another way that I have here, which is to use a minimal offline layout tool, um, which uh, is actually a lot better and faster in my opinion. <laughs> um, so unlike a full uh, Visual Studio layout, a minimal layout would only contain the updated packages. Um, so it literally takes the difference. So it always is smaller and faster to, um, to both generate and deploy. Great. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then one more topic for uh, um, our advanced topic today, which is uh, using um, container for remote build scenarios. Um, now you can actually install Visual Studio build tools into a container and to quickly introduce build tools to, uh, for those folks who are unfamiliar with it, um, build tools is a standalone installer that it you know, only lays down um, the tools required to build your project. Um, without installing the Visual Studio IDE. So you can imagine there's different build tools for .NET, C++, Python, TypeScript, uh, um, and so on. And so it only includes things like SDKs, compilers, headers, um, uh, and wait for it, build tools, right? Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you know, if you wanted to use this by itself, you would uh, build your Visual Studio projects from a CLI. Um, now, what you can actually benefit from installing the build tools into a container is that it'll allow you to package a, a consistent build system um, that you can use. And uh, when you publish that container into your, I don't know, Azure Container Registry or like other internal Docker registry, um, then you can use that image for your CI CD workflow by, um, you know, having your servers pull, pull from it. Um, and like, obviously this diagram is grossly oversimplifying this. Um, so you can find out a little bit more about it in the link shown below. That is very exciting. <laughs> I love simplified diagrams like that too. It's just like, oh, that's it. And then you go into the actual docs and it's like, oh, I have to do all this stuff, but it's yeah. totally worth it at the end of the day. <laughs> this one so is funny. totally worth it. This one is a lot more complex than most of our other, uh, other uh, capabilities but it's worth it. <laughs> it's like, uh, what's that meme that goes around where it's like, you have the, like, Gru from Despicable Me with the whiteboard. <laughs> it's like, okay, first we write the code, assuming there's no problems, and then we publish. That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's yeah. as simple as that. <laughs> Missing a few, uh, you know, steps in between, but that's it. Yeah, it's okay. We don't need the extra steps in between. <laughs> cool. Um, and then we can talk about maybe code spaces, um, how this works in a development environment in the cloud. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, 
I think you talked about GitHub code space um, already in, in Visual Studio Toolbox. Um, so I don't know how much I need to explain in this episode, um, but to just briefly go over it, it's basically a complete development environment that's in the cloud and it you know hosts your project and the development tools. Um, and so what this means is that for an individual developer, you can develop from anywhere and it can be accessed from Visual Studio, um, VS Code, and like even from your browser through GitHub directly. Um, but what I'm more focused on um, and what my team is focused on is really for development teams um, to help those development teams and the team members to contribute to their projects without you know complicating all the local setup. Um, so that we can help them to be more agile and uh, easily scalable. Um, and so for uh, using GitHub code spaces on Visual Studio, um, it's in beta, so you have to sign up for it uh, using the link uh, shown on the screen. But uh, if you're using Visual Studio as your access point to code spaces um, or like as a client for GitHub code spaces, um, we've created what we call a tailored installation journey. Um, which will actually make it super simple for you to install Visual Studio um, and ready to be connected to your code spaces. So like, uh, remember the workload selection screen that I shared earlier, you won't even need to go through all the installation details to like select all those workloads or components. We do that all for you. Uh, this means a much quicker first time installation of Visual Studio, which will happen in like under five minutes now. That's really cool. So where's the, where's the rest of that? Uh, footprint going if it's only taking like a seventh of the time to fully install VS? Yeah, um, so all the compute power, you know, the compiling, the debugging, testing, running, all that is now happening in the cloud. So all those tools are uh, in the cloud um, and you're basically accessing it from your client machine. Neat. Yeah, still slightly bitter that I can't have my caffeine break, but I do appreciate the faster installation times. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's what we try to do. I know the Visual Studio installations can be really, really big. So, um, you know, narrowing it down and, and refactoring as much as we can is what, we, what we're trying to do now. So, yeah. yeah. And it seems like that makes sense for code spaces too, just uh, conceptually anyway, since if the idea is you can develop from whatever machine that you have, including your not so stellar uh, personal laptop, than yeah. having like a, a small footprint for the install for VS is pretty nice. Exactly. I can use my little sister uh, who's in middle school, um, her laptop to do development it doesn't have to be a heavy duty development machine. Awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just totally steal your sister's laptop just to, <laughs> to do it. Oh, work. you know, my laptop sure. has a lot more important things to do than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so, uh, some of the things that we're developing on our team. Um, actually, there's one thing that I really wanted to introduce here today, um, which is the dev in it. Um, so we've all been there, right? Like even after you clone your repo on your machine, the time it takes you to actually get that project to build and run takes a really, really long time. Like hours, if not like a whole day, because oftentimes you really need to install additional dependencies like, you know, SDKs compiled, compilers and even like external tools like Redis and RabbitMQ. Um, so this uh, Devinit essentially takes the VS config um, a step further. And we're really trying to solve this, you know, oh, it works on my machine problem um, <laughs> that we tend to face a lot. Um, so, you know, with every project having a lot of dependencies, you know, this means your code space environment also needs to be not only just created, but it needs to be configured. Um, so this is where Devinit comes in. Put it simply, uh, it's a tool that helps you define and configure your development environment. Um, and you can think of this configuration as like how you would customize um, or configure your uh, a VM for a specific repo. Um, and uh, this configuration information will now live with the source code, uh, so that the next time someone clones a repo to a code space, it'll set everything up for them. Um, so that all they need to do is type in devinit in it um, in the terminal and press F5 and it'll be like magic, it'll just work. That is so exciting. Seriously, it's always such a waste of time when you 
clone a repo thinking it's going to work. And then you spend hours just trying to get F5. <laughs> yeah. Work. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you finally get it to work. And then your managers will be like, oh, it might be a good idea for me to write um, a good, a long wiki or documentation on it. Yeah. And then it never gets <laughs> updated. And, and yeah. Which I have had to do before. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you well, do it. And two years later, you look at it and you're still the author. What's yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. Um, so I can go a little bit into Devinit if you like. Um, would that be that be something that you, you're interested in, or I would, but I think we're actually short on time. Sure. So for people who would like to learn more about it, where can they go? Yeah, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, uh, you can go to aka.ms uh, slash Devinit slash stocks. Um, and there you will see uh, some of the examples that we have, the tools that um, you can use with Devinit as well. Sweet. Yeah. Um, plus, uh, .NET Conf, which just ended, uh, did a full scenario on Devinit and went into depth with it, too, and it was pretty cool. So. Yep. Yep. You can totally optimize your you know, cloud environment and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's Honestly, cool Devinit stuff. kind of just deserves its own episode in many respects. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good one too. Yeah, sweet. So, I mean, thank you so much, Sujin. I had no idea there were just so many different things you can do just while VS is installing. And even that time, <laughs> the time it takes to install is even shorter, so. Like, right. Yeah, so it's not just like a one and done thing with that installation dash dashboard. You can keep coming back to it if you want. Yeah. Good stuff. So, uh, I mean, you already mentioned that people can go to the Devinit site and stuff, but are there any other resources that people should go to in the event? Yeah. They have to work? So, actually, Devinit is, uh, we actually built it for Code Spaces, but it is available uh, locally um, on our preview channel. So, if you wanted to try that out, you can try it out on our um, Visual Studio previews. Um, and then, if you have feedback, uh, which we take very seriously, um, you can actually give us some feedback by going to ak.ms slash devinit slash uh, feedback. And we would greatly appreciate that. Great. Well, thanks once again. And I hope everyone goes and installs VS if they haven't already, or because <laughs> there's a lot more to it than you think. And with that, happy coding.